Hey, Facebook, what's up? So excited that you are tuning in to this live stream with my amazing friend, Bob Burke, who made a big difference in my life and my sales career um, together with John David Mann and the Go-Giver. Thank you. I'm so excited. We're <laughs> streaming live from his office. I mean, can you believe it? Um, so I was just at Podcast Movement, learning about podcasting, how I can bring more value to the table. And now I'm on my way in Florida to Key West to catch up with other amazing friends. And it just happens that Bob lives right between That's Orlando. Right. Orlando and uh, the Keys. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So I got the opportunity to be here <laughs> with him. And I thought, well, what can we do to deliver value for you? And Bob has just talked about a really, really wonderful topic, dealing successful people dealing in truth. Hmm. Right. So what, what do you understand? Like what's, what is that? Yeah. You know, it, it really comes down to that. Those who tend to be the most successful, both, you know, in general life and in business, they, they deal in, in truths. They make, they, they make sure they don't just sort of go with what they'd like to be true. Yeah. But that what is true. Yes. And they start there. Yeah. They they make sure to understand, to study, to embrace the the laws of human nature, the laws of physical nature, the laws of spiritual nature, the law, right? Because if we're not dealing in truth, then we're always operating from a false premise. And if the premise is false, then even the greatest logic in the world can never result in a correct conclusion. Hmm. So, you know, you take something like the physical laws of, uh, let's say, the law of gravity. Right. And we know that in our earthly existence, gravity exists. It's a thing. Now, by the way, is this good or bad? Depends. It uh, is, right? Yeah, it just is. I mean, it's good when it keeps us, it manifests as good when it keeps us from floating aimlessly up into space. Uh, we could say it manifests into something bad when we fall off a seven story building. Okay. And if you're dealing in truths, you don't say, well, you know, this gravity thing, I'm going to just be positive and make believe it doesn't exist. So I'm going to just try to fly off a seven story building. Well, no, you're going to fall to the ground because Pretty gravity fun. is a thing. Yeah. And so, you know, you look at the, the people who invented flight, uh, you know, Wright brothers. well, yeah. And you no, know, it, 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 I think was, and, and they're credited with it. You know, there's a great book out by Walter Isaacs. I say great book because I've heard it's great. And everything I've ever read by Walter Isaacson is great. But I haven't, and it's about the Wright brothers, and I haven't actually read that yet, and I can't wait to do so. Um, they're credited with being, of course, first in flight, and they they were. But uh, you know, I've, typically, whenever there's a great breakthrough, there are always two or three or four other people, and I understand that there were a bunch of them kind of going for that, you know, that that same. So there could have been someone in Europe, there could have been someone in Australia, you know, who knows? But but when they were looking at 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 um, inventing a machine that would fly. Uh, they didn't say, well, you know, this gravity thing might get in the way, so let's ignore it. No, yeah. instead, what did they do? They learned the truth. They learned the laws mm -hmm. of physics, uh, the laws of aerodynamics, uh, the laws of gravity, the la and they built a machine that could basically work uh, against the resistance of all that and fly. So when we say deal in truths, it's not like you're saying, okay, well, this is just how it is, that's as, gonna, as good as it's going to get. No. You you deal in truth so that you understand it in order to advance the process mm -hmm. in a way that benefits everyone. Okay. So, uh, you know, you, let's take uh, the sales process. And of course, that's your expertise. And you say, okay, so, so what about sales? What's a truth about sales? And one truth about sales is that no one's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet, right? They're not going to buy from you because you need the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're not going to buy from you just because you're a really nice person. That's that's so true. Okay, I mean, right. being a nice person probably helps in the conversation. It, it helps in the conversation, yeah. but it's that they're not going to buy from you for that reason. Okay, yeah. that's the truth. Say, so, oh well, darn! I really need the money. Uh, they should buy from me for that reason. Okay. Well, unless they're your mom or dad, uh, they're not going to do so. Okay, they're going to buy from you only because they believe they will be better off by doing so. Than by not doing so. That's true. That's human nature. Well, they focus on what's in it for them. Well, of right? course they do, and they and they should. Yeah. Because they're buying from you. If they're going to exchange their money or their time or their what have you, they should be getting 
more in value than what they're paying. In economic law, in economic truth says that people will exchange their money for that which they feel is of greater value than the money they're exchanging it for. And that's what you say so beautifully in The Go-Giver, right? Money is, is an echo, echo of, of value. value, right? Yeah. Which means the value must come first. You focus mm. on bringing that value. So, so if you were, so that's truth, okay? So because of this, we know that if we want another person to buy our product or service, we have got to be able to discover why it, they would feel it's in their best interest to buy it. Yes. So we ask them questions and we listen. And you were just on my, my podcast. We just, while you were here visiting, we, we recorded an interview with you on my podcast, which will air next month. And like you were saying, it's, it was, it's really about, you know, taking the, the, the focus off of yourself and asking them the questions. And then, as you said, listening, uh, not to answer an objection, not to, but just to listen, just to understand what their needs are, what their concerns are, what their desires are. Mm. So when we do that, now we're advancing the process because it's about them. It's not about, about us. And so if we acknowledge that truth that in Dale Carnegie said it in his classic, how to win friends and influence people, he, he wrote, ultimately people do things for their reasons not our reasons, yes. yeah. right? So that's truth, okay? Mm -hmm. If we understand this, now we know the best way to help them own our product or service. Make sure we communicate why it's in their best interest. And again, we do that through asking quest the right questions, listening, and then connecting the benefit of our product or service with what they need, want, or desire. So how do you see that, um, like, how do successful people do that? I mean, everybody can probably learn how to listen. Like what, and there are many successful people, but what does the creme de la creme do? Like what do people do that are like in the 1% of super, super successful? Well, you know, I remember that um, in Adam Grant's excellent book, Give and Take, he yes. cited an Australian study of financial advisors, okay, stockbrokers who are basically um, selling their, company's management of a person's growth product, financial growth products. And so they, they looked at what made, again, the creme de la creme, right? So successful. And now what were some of their, what, what were some of their, their characteristics or talents? Well, you know, they, they obviously understood finance, but so did a lot of people. That, that wasn't the determining factor. That was just, you had to understand that. Yeah. Uh, they worked very hard, but of course, so did a lot of people. But what separated the absolute top producers from everyone else is they were absolutely laser fo They put the interests mm -hmm. of their prospective clients ahead of themselves and even ahead of their companies. And right. I think that's key, especially when you work in a company and you can't, you know, be your own boss by making up your own products. That's really important because mm -hmm. you get those deeper connections. Sure. Now, you take something further, we say, okay, well, people are going to do what's in their best interest, right? So someone might say, okay, Bob, but what about the truth that as salespeople, we as human beings are self-interested? Are, are, don't we have to deal with that truth? Or are you saying just deny that we're self-interested so we can focus on them? No, don't deny that you're self-interested. You are self-interested. So am I. We, we both are. We all are because we're human beings. Yeah. That self-interest has helped us create generations of human beings and keep the, the world going, right? So no, you don't have to deny your self-interest. Just simply set it aside. Mm. Set it aside. Because, and here's why. Because you know that if you lead with yourself and why you want them to buy, because I need the money, they're not likely to buy. So actually, if you want to do what's in your best self-interest, set your self-interest aside temporarily and focus on them. And to the degree that they understand that your focus is on pleasing them, serving them, making their life better. That's the degree they're going to feel good about you. They're going to like you, but they're really going to trust you and have confidence in you. And the chances are much better that they are going to become your, your customer. Yeah. How, how do you view, like, I told you a story earlier, right? About the person who made up another person that didn't oh, exist my gosh. to get the sale. <laughs> so how do you how do you deal with people who who are thinking they really need to please the other person? 
and they need to be like they are like you know getting the rapport right. and all of this which is taught in sales and which feels so manipulating how do you deal with that mindset sure okay so creating rapport great i mean that's very important but as you said not doing it in a way that's not authentic yes and so what happened was in, in the story you told a person was talking with a, a with a potential customer and the person mentioned having i think a 16 year old daughter or something yeah. like that and he actually says something like oh yeah i have a 16 year old daughter ah, that's called lying totally. okay. yeah. <laughs> don't do that <laughs> but but there are other ways of of genuinely and authentically finding um similarities in the two your, of you you could take your niece and yeah have well yeah <laughs> or, or and it may not be about children it may be yeah. about the 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 same area or enjoying the same type of recreation or different things or experiences what have you i mean yeah by all means find find uh commonalities that's that's great uh but of course always do it honestly and, and uh authentically i know yeah that, that, that was something that really shocked me yeah, that was, well yeah i'm, I'm sure you would. too <laughs> like i don't know if you've heard such a story before you oh I'm, that, yeah, yeah. of course we've all yeah. seen people who who do things and you know here's the thing it's it's not even in your best interest mm. to do that. Uh, it, it because the person and, and you said this earlier, the person's gonna find out eventually. Maybe or maybe maybe not, but they probably are gonna. Yeah. And, if I, this person I mean, becomes a customer, yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, there's some. I mean, it, you know, I, I think it was Mark Twain who's credited, and of course, Mark Twain's credited. Mark Twain and Benjamin Franklin here in the states are pretty much credited for everything that's wise. You know, <laughs> and and they, a lot of times they didn't really say it, but it sounds like them. Yeah. You know, just like Gandhi. You know, I'm sure those, they're more wise people. Right. Yeah. And, well, uh, yeah. And <laughs> and and so um, and so um, but what 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 he's credited as uh, as saying is um. Oh, now I'm trying to think what he was credited to saying. No, that's okay. that's okay. You threw me off with you. There's probably some more wise I, people. I did. Yeah. Uh, no, that's <laughs> this is my fault. But um, um. Oh gosh, I, 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 I can't. Authenticity. Yeah, and and so, uh, but I mean, it, it just comes back to that. Yeah, it, it, we can't do that. <laughs> no, no. no. And I also feel like when you are yourself, it's so much easier. Like when you're caught up in the web of like lying. Oh, now I remember. Right? He said, "Tell the truth, and you won't have to have as good a memory." <laughs> yeah, exactly. That right. was that was the point. Yeah, totally, totally. And you know, it's so much easier when you understand that if you if you don't have rapport with a person if you can't relate it's okay right yeah you that's okay too the, you might not get the sale yeah but it's totally fine right they will fall in love with somebody else that's totally good and you know and you might not quite understand but you understand they're feeling something and, and you know and that's why i tell you with empathy you know you don't have to know exactly how they feel and we we was one taught to say well i understand how you feel well you might not and so you know yeah. the, the 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 best thing to say my you know i i really i i don't understand how you feel because i haven't experienced that before mm, yeah. but i do understand it's a concern mm -hmm. and if you're concerned it's valid and now we talk about how to go past and and and, and now deal with it but mm -hmm. again you're dealing in truth yeah, yeah yeah can we talk about dealing in truth with you know how to build relationships like relationships that are true that are meaningful um that are not just on the surface like how can people take or create these relationships mm -hmm. so like for example we met like um about a year ago a little bit more than that i would think so yeah. and we kept in contact mm -hmm. so this enabled so many things like interviewing you for my master class interviewing you for my podcast now i had the opportunity to be on your podcast and now we're <laughs> sitting here i mean hello <laughs> like what can people do to because i think everybody's craving deeper relationships but sometimes they just don't know how to go about that mm. well i think a lot of it goes goes back to authenticity mm -hmm. and not trying to be someone you're not yeah you know making an authentic connection and, and you always talk about you know heart selling yes. heart cells right yes. that's really kind of what it is in a mm. sense um and it could be done in a variety of ways because it can be person to person it can be on the telephone it can be online uh, i'll never forget the time Dondi skumachi and i think you know Dondi, yes. right she's such a, a great mentor of mine and a wonderful leader she's and wonderful. yeah and i met her she is and i met her on twitter and probably communicated with her on twitter for 
maybe six months, nine months, whatever it was. And I invited her on my podcast. And it was really funny because we, this is back when I, it wasn't podcast. It was back when I was doing it so long. It was back when I was doing it on my, my blog. And so we did it through the telephone, through a conference call line. Okay. And so we got on the phone and we just started talking. I said, hey, Donnie, how are you? She goes, oh, good, Bob. How are you? And we're talking. I said, wait a second. Have we ever actually spoken before? And she said, no, I don't think we have. And we laughed because we realized that just even through Twitter, we had actually developed a great relationship, a great friendship, right? And so I don't think it's so much the medium, but it's, you know, do you genuinely want to add value to another person's life? Yeah. Do you genuinely care? Yeah. Do you genuinely care? And, yeah. you know, Simon Sinek in his, in his book, Leaders Eat Last, talks about trust as being a, um, a biological reaction so not a response that's thought out a reaction something that's just on an uh, on an emotional level or right? a biological reaction to the belief so again it may not even be true but it's your belief that someone has your best interests wow. at heart now that. when it is true yes. and you do have that person's best interest at heart wow that's a powerful heart connection yes and that's that's what sells and that's what sells exactly right, because one yeah, yeah because once you you connect um you know there's a there's a, an old talmudic saying that says words that come from the heart enter the heart mm. okay and so once you have that heart to heart connection which of course is exactly what you teach now the sale it, it's much easier for that sale to take place because the um the uh, foundation for all of it is already Built, it's already there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love talking about you know having your soulmate clients mm, and mm, um, mm. how to fall in love with clients. I think Tony Grabmeyer is also a common connections we have. Mm -hmm. And um, so he interviewed me for his Be Fulfilled podcast, mm -hmm. and we talked about like falling in love with your clients, which sounds sounds a bit weird, but if you really <laughs> take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Right. If you really come from that place of service, of having their interest in mind, yeah. that, that's what you have in a relationship. And um, I, I really love that. And, you know, the goal giver, which I always have to refer to because it <laughs> is you. one of my very favorite books written in a beautiful way. And they, there's a truth in the, this book. Right. And the other books have built up on this idea. Sure. So, well, the laws that John and I discuss in the book. Uh, and we always say, you know, and, and uh, we didn't make these up. <laughs> you know well, I mean, yeah. we didn't make them up. There, there's nothing new about them. It's, it, these have been around since time immemorial. So these are truths we wanted to tap into. Now, we we named them a certain way. And, of course, John's beautiful way of writing and telling a story, you know. But but there's nothing new about these. And people would and it just revise me because when the book first came out and we were first being interviewed on this and, and people would say, so, you know, what, what is it you guys put in this book that's anything new? And we'd say, well, nothing, okay. you know? <laughs> so, so because truths basically don't change. I think it was Jim Rohn who said, beware the person who comes with um, new fundamentals, right? Because fundamentals are fundamentals because they've been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's basically it's universal laws. Right? Universal laws, exactly, and they work across the board. Whether we're talking about success in terms of financial, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, relational, what probably a dozen other ways. Uh -huh. You know, truths are truths. Universal laws are universal laws. So, if you are thinking about being an entrepreneur, or if you are a struggling entrepreneur, would you say that like improving in sales is like the most important thing you can start with? Oh, you know, you you, you really have to. Mm. Uh, uh, David, um, uh, I'm trying to think of David's last name. Uh, I'm, and I'm David Nagel. My, what's oh. with my memory today? It's been a little, you know, usually I'm pretty good. But, you know, yeah. David David Nagel, uh, The Millions Within. And and he talks about that, you know, that when you have business, you, you've got to be able to sell. And he has know. an amazing success story. Oh, Truly amazing. I know. Truly amazing. Like what really stood out with me is like when he changed his attitude. Exactly. Things. Exactly. Came. And he just, it was a decision. Like he just snapped yeah. the finger. It was a decision on, yeah. on his yeah. part. Yeah. We, we, we talked about it yeah. and he was like, you know, I had this moment and I made a decision and off he went. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. And, I, and that's an important point you bring up because it really is a decision. And mm -hmm. so much is a decision. 
And, you know, when we go back to dealing in truths, that's a decision. You know, we might not want to believe something is a certain way because it's inconvenient. It, it doesn't feel good. It would be, wouldn't it be better if people weren't this way? Yeah. It's irrelevant. People are that way, you know. I, I learned the hard way about uh, change uh, in the, the mid-90s as it was really going more toward technology. And I got left behind, uh, you know, because, well, I don't like technology. I don't want things to change. Isn't that funny that technology and, yet it did and anyway. your phone rings? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, uh, it's just, it's so, it's so funny that, you, that, and it's true. Like, you know, getting onto <laughs> social media, like changing the way you yeah. interact. Yeah. And and often people say that it's like superficial on social media, which I think it's not true. It only if only if that's how it's approached. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think it's like anything else. To you know, to me, you're yeah. gonna build deep relationships on yeah. social media. Again, it's it's where's your focus? Mm -hmm. If you're if you're focused, you know, because when I when I speak at a live conference now, and, I, and a lot of times they'll ask me to speak on social media, and I'll say, you know, I can kind of in a sense sum it up in, 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 in a single thought. And that is before every tweet, pin, post, or whatever it's called on the, the, the whatever medium it happens to be, um, ask yourself, is what I'm about to click send on, is it gonna add value to another person's life? Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, you start start there and, and you're, you, you know, you can, and so, uh, so yeah, it doesn't have to be super, a lot of it is, but that's not because it is, it's because that's the way it's, it's utilized. Yeah. Uh, so yes, yeah. So when I uh, when I didn't adjust and and keep up with the times in terms of technology, my business uh, I lost a lot of the business actually because some of my clients work and I kind of said, ah, you know, I don't really need to. No, I did need to. So it wasn't whether or not I liked change. It was the fact that change was going to happen with or without me, and that was a very painful and expensive lesson I learned because I I basically had to restart my business, and so uh, you know. Uh, so do you like change? Do you not like change? I don't know. You know, personally, I, I'm not a lover of change. <laughs> I'd like to get really good at something and then kind of keep it there. But that's not I, how life works. Yeah, but I think that's you. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, but understanding that whatever you do, that there, there is change, you evolve. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, would you, can you imagine like doing what you've done like 10 years ago, 15? No, well, that's the thing. Ago. And if I kept trying to do that without yeah. changing, you know, that, so that was a lesson I had to learn that it didn't matter whether I want, the truth was change was going to happen. Mm. Now it was just, you know, kind of fill in the blank, you know, uh, if you, if you uh, want to be successful, then you will change, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you will adjust. So just talking about that, something comes to mind, um, especially connecting online. Right. I talked about it in my past podcast recently that you get a friend request, you accept it. And then the next day, <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> you uh, what, you mean like, they wait till the next day with you? Well, sometimes. <laughs> I was, and then you get these messages, mm -hmm. right? That the person is, in, and I always, when I accept a friend request, I always leave a message. I always say, hey, what's Absolutely. up? Happy I, to have you here. So thank you for connecting. Exactly. Very, yeah. So what are you up to? And I'm looking forward to learning more about you. And then that seems to be the door opener oftentimes um, that people just drop whatever offer they have. Um, I think they do it anyway. I, I think they would do it even if you didn't, because I think they have it on auto, whatever, yeah. that, that once you accept um, their their request it automatically that's why i said sometimes it happens right after i accept a request i and i i know it's an auto thing and sometimes it's the next day or some and then then two weeks later mm -hmm. or and then a week later and then three you know they've timed it out it's a yeah. it's a thing and and again is there a time and place for those things when used appropriately but that's not appropriate what they're yeah what they're doing so well, because I, for me it feels like they're so desperate to get the next dollar sure. into the well they're they're seeing you as a uh, you know, ka -ching, cash register as a yeah. sale. They're not seeing you as a person, not seeing me as a person, not seeing whoever they're doing that. Is a, is a, and we know it. Yeah. We know it. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, you know. So that's also the difference, right, between those successful people. Sure. Um, living their truth mm -hmm. and those who just, you know, have it on automation or, you know, do copy paste, whatever level they're at. Um, any suggestions on what would be 
how would you feel good when somebody connects with you? What what would make you feel good to even have that conversation? Oh well, I, and, and let's say this is on let's say it's on LinkedIn, uh, mm -hmm. for example, because that's yeah. a uh, you know you can go through this person's profile and look at what is probably meaningful to that person oh. and have a you know make a comment or if you want to ask a question. Uh, you know, what have you about that. But uh, I would always go through the person's profile and see what is it that they obviously find to be of value. And I would focus on that and, and you know, comment about that. Awesome. So connect first, like it's connecting the head and the heart. heart. <laughs> and then come from that place of heart. And I think that's because heart speaks to heart, as you said so yeah. beautifully earlier, um, so that you really truly have the connection because you never know what, what comes out of it, no. right? Um, I wouldn't go that far that you should be like calculating, just being like open and see how you can support another person because what goes around comes around. So, so often it does, doesn't so, it? It's yeah. It's kind of amazing. I think that's another universal law that, you know, <laughs> you, yeah. and, <laughs> and I'm, I'm understanding that better and better. So when I was an exchange student, my host mom always said that to me, like, you know, when I got upset with something, somebody, you know, didn't <laughs> interact the way I or I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. She was always thought, don't, don't worry, it's their loss. What goes around comes around. <laughs> and you know, the the older I get, I'm like, oh, okay, that's what you meant, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, because it can happen in a good way too. Yeah. So we have a couple of people on live. If you have any questions, now is the moment <laughs> to put them into the comments. Um, Jody, I think your ears might burn because I ah, just say hello. Jody Mayberry, we were just <laughs> yeah, we were just talking is. about you. We were just talking about you. Uh, you and Lee. And yeah, awesome. So if you want to know something, put it in now. And um, otherwise, we're gonna wrap up. I think. Yeah, yeah. Thank it's been so it, well. It's been in, been great having you as a guest. I'm just so so grateful and uh, honored that after you attended your conference where. Uh, I know you got some great insights regarding podcast podcasting, which is funny because of course, like, you know, you have such a wonderful podcast and you do such a great job and you're so well respected and renowned for your podcast. And yet you're investing money to fly overseas to attend a conference where you can learn more about podcasting. So that's just what people do who are winners, who are successful people. They're, they're always looking for, and Jody, I know is I met Jody at, at, at this very conference. Uh, I think it was in, Fort Worth, if I recall, um, about I think four years ago or so, and, and here's Jody at a at another one. So he yeah, and he has a great podcast. Well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so so much. Um, My so pleasure. Excited thank that you. We got to share, and um, yeah, whenever you guys have questions, replay, let it let us know in the comments. <laughs> and otherwise, we're just gonna say bye from wonderful Florida. <laughs>